on Painting Happy Little Minis. I'm Gretchen. And I'm Dave. And today we are painting some Malifaux. All the other letters. All the other letters. I wish that you would have been my teacher for every spelling class I ever had. Me too. <laughs> because one, he's thrown some fisticuffs and I think that's fun. Let's see if Leona can find it for next week. <laughs> Previously <laughs> on. Previously on, Gretchen making a bleeping noise. And you've been watching Painting Happy Little Minis. We'll see you at your friendly local game store. Thanks for joining us on Painting Happy Little Minis. I'm Gretchen. And I'm Dave. And today we're going to be putting together and then painting Gaslands models. We are. Yes. <laughs> yes. So uh, we're going to be taking a look at uh, Gaslands Refueled from Osprey Games. Mm -hmm. uh, Gaslands was an um, incredibly successful uh, game that Osprey Games released probably th two years ago, I think, uh, in their smaller, um, thinner blue book format that they do. Um, Incredibly popular, just to hit at exactly the right time. Uh, and it's an odd game <laughs> for us in that uh, you don't sort of, uh, you can't walk into a store and buy Gaslands branded um, miniatures that you can immediately start playing with. Uh, instead, you have to head to your local Target or Walmart or from the past. supermarket and pick up some Hot Wheels or Matchbox cars and then equip them with suitable uh, equipment, <laughs> weapons, uh, rams, extra armor, um, drivers, that, all that sort of stuff. Um, and we're going to be doing that today with a very special plastic sprue called uh, the Implements of Carnage, <laughs> which is made by uh, North Star miniatures, North Star military figures, uh, out of the UK. All right. But uh, this sprue is, is very cool. It's got so much stuff on there. You can equip an entire team of cars for Gaslands using just one of these sprues. So if you much got, stuff. When you use two sprues, you can uh, be going for days, basically. <laughs> but uh, yeah, as you said, we're going to be um, assembling some, mm -hmm. and then we're going to be uh, painting some. And then we're going to be giving something away. We are indeed. What are we going to give away? Uh, I believe we're going to give away a copy of the Gaslands Refueled book. Uh, not this one. Not this one. This is mine. <laughs> you can tell because it's damaged right here. But we, so we don't want to give you a damaged copy. A brand, a brand new one that yep. has yet to, to feel the love of Dave. Yes, for sure. <laughs> and, be, uh, and I think we're going to be shipping it directly from Osprey Games. Is that right, Leona? Yep. Excellent. Okay, yes. So, wait. Feel the love of Dave. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> um, but hashtag refueled is what we are going to be using for that. So yep. to all my friends in the chat. R-E-F-U-E-L-L-E-D. Refueled. Two L's. <laughs> uh, thank you for the spelling. But I, I, I figured it was handy. There we go. I'm going to pop that just there. Uh, okay. And we'll say hi to everybody Everyone in the chat. In the chat. Yeah, so we have, chat? we have Carl, we have Sarah, we have Byron, we have Richard, uh, we have CL Franklin 15 over on hey the uh, YouTube. YouTube's. Yeah. Fantastic. Woohoo. All right. Cool. So, um, how do we get started? I'm excited now. So, the very first thing we have to do uh, is you need to go to your local supermarket or uh, department store and pick up a whole bunch of cars. Buy way more than you actually need. That's the very important <laughs> part of it. I, bought, I went on Tuesday night and bought 19 cars, even though I already have a bunch. Uh, so, yes, um, I think you've already picked out the one you I want have. to do. I have. I've picked out mine. I'm going to be working with, there is a turquoise uh, 52 Chevy, and it kind of reminds me of my first car, because my first car was a 1994 Chevy pickup, and it nice. was baby blue. Cool. Uh, so it's like the grandpa of my first car. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. And I'm going to, from the Fast and the Furious pack... Ooh. Fancy. I'm going to picking, be picking the uh, 61 Chevy Impala. 
I didn't own a That's 61 Chevy Impala, but my dad owns a 66. So, okay. Uh, and his is also baby blue, which is kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, so we've got the, the cars. We're, what we're going to do with these cars is, um, one, of the, one of the things I want to talk about uh, is the modeling, uh, taking these cars and turning them into Gaslands cars or cars for other car combat games. Uh, there's a lot of idiosyncrasies that people have. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of different approaches that you can take, that sort of thing. Some people uh, will do what we're doing today, which is we'll just take the weapons and we'll stick them on the cars using super glue. Nice and simple. Um, other people like to go to the other, like the complete extreme other end. And down here, the way that these are sort of are put together is that there's a typically a metal top yeah. and a plastic bottom, uh, which then holds in a clear window section oh. and holds the uh, the axles in that kind of thing. Yeah. And yeah, I'm just going to put. So there's the, the metal top, the plastic bottom. You can see the clear window is another separate piece of plastic. Uh, and then you've got the axles for the, um, the wheels. But down here, back when they were, um, the Matchbox and Hot Wheels cars were done uh, when their top and bottom were mm -hmm. metal, um, these were rivets they'll put in. What they do now is that they're cast into the, the metal top and they pop out through the, the plastic and then a sort of crimping machine comes along and pushes them down so it holds them together. So what you can do if you get a drill, like a power drill, and the right size bit, you can mm -hmm. drill those out and re remove it and take it apart, separate okay. them, so that you can uh, put the top onto something else, mm -hmm. a different bottom. You could take the axles off, you can put on new wheels. On this sprue, there are four, you can see four tires, four wheels there. So you could switch out these wheels for these ones yeah. if you wanted to. Uh, but there's also people. Yep, there are um, arms. models in here for to put them together. steering wheels. There are <laughs> legs. Let me show these under the, under this, the camera. Okay, so there are basically drivers and gunners, that kind of thing. So this is a, there are arms here for somebody holding the like the paddles yeah. on a um, on a fifty cal. Yeah, the the legs, which are cut off, of course, because you don't never need the lower half of the legs when you're <laughs> working with matchbox cars, uh, and got steering wheels as well. Uh, on this. As well, there are two. There's a motorcycle. I was gonna say there's there's motorcycle here. Yep. So basically, that's two halves of a motorcycle on each sprue, which is cool because you can use motorcycles in the game as well. Uh, there are two rams here. There's like a um, snowplow kind of approach, and more a uh, bulldozer kind of look. Um, oh, I noticed I've cut some pieces off that one. There's like a um, a ball bar or a mm -hmm. roo bar, as we'd call it in Australia. <laughs> um, there are flashy exhausts. Um, I feel like I'm going to learn about cars today. Not a, not a lot. I don't know a lot <laughs> about cars. I just know enough to make cool-looking model cars. Um, but yes, and then we've got a whole bunch of uh, twin machine guns. We've got a, um, a harpoon launcher. Uh, we've got mm. some mini guns. We've got some separate guns. We've got a, um, this is like a sonic weapon. Okay. So if you want to like shatter somebody's windows or pop their tires, you can use a sonic weapon. Uh, there's a, um, a, what do you call it? An air scoop, a big air scoop if you want to make it your car super fancy. Um, there's a huge engine block. If you want to put another engine on top of your on, existing on engine, engine. <laughs> or double your engines up. Um, so yeah, and then you've got these sheets of, uh, which are basically metal, metal, ugh, metal. Mm -hmm. so you have like diamond plate and you've got corrugated metal there. You can use those for armor plating on your, your vehicles. But uh, yeah, definitely cool. And my favorite thing in here, of course, is the, the toolbox. <laughs> it's, a little, it's a little plastic toolbox. It's you can so stick teeny. In the, the bed of a truck. So, um, 
Yeah, so we've got those. Uh, because we're not going to take these apart today, uh -huh. um, we won't worry about trying to squeeze the, the guys in there. <laughs> um, for the ones we're going to be painting, I've, already, I've done that. I've put two guys in a Excellent. two crewmen in a car so we can see that later. Um, one of the other things that, that some people do. I know. Did we already? I think we already had a discussion about I like to keep the wheels rolling. All oh, right, yeah. Well, I haven't talked about that. Oh. No, no, no. I mean, we, have, we, have talk, we have mentioned that before, haven't we? Hmm. Um, so, yeah, there are two, two schools of thought on. Well, actually, there's a couple more than that, but the two main schools of thought are um, that you keep the, keep the wheels. Ooh. And with the turn, and the other one is that you uh, that you glue them so mm -hmm. that they're um, solid and they don't don't roll. So my th my thinking on it is, if it can do that, it's a toy, <laughs> and if it can't do that, it's a model. <laughs> so depending on what you want to have, there's no judgment from me. I want to deck it out, and then I want to get a Hot Wheels racetrack. Right, <laughs> and <laughs> spin it around, loop the loop, <laughs> yeah, do all those things. That'd be cool. But uh, no, the other thing I was going to mention is that some people uh, like to strip all of the paint off mm. the existing things so that they, they don't lose any of the, the details. Uh, my thinking is, uh, my personal thinking is, that's a lot of work. <laughs> and those details aren't particularly fine anyway. Mm. So, uh, yeah. Should we uh, start clipping? and? Yeah. And I'm excited kind of to deck out. Excellent. Okay, let's move some of these to the side. What else? Which which pair of, of clippers um, would you prefer? Oh, I, I brought. I oh, brought so you have your own clippers. I brought All right. Home. I see how it is. So, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I also brought my knife so I can clean up some mold lines or some connection points. But uh, yeah. Ooh, put on let's first. make some cool cars. What does this one need? I think this one's going to get the um, the big engine block on the front. But there we go. It's already it. It looks incredibly aggressive, right? <laughs> so, Dave. Yeah. What would be the process that you would go through to kind of create a car? That's a good question. That's a very good question. I mean, at the moment, I was just going to sit down and go, oh, I, I like that piece. I'm going to clip that off. Oh, I like that piece. I feel like I'm going to clip that off. I don't know about cars enough. I feel like I'm going to be like, this would look cool here, and it would not be an actual functioning. The, the great thing about um, cars is that there's so much you can do with them. Mm -hmm. They're, as long as you've got, you got the um, the frame, an engine, wheels, and a chassis. You can just do it, whatever. It, you can put them. You put those in any sort of arrangement you like. Well, maybe not any sort of arrangement to make it rolling. And wheels are going to touch the ground, be connected by some sort of transmission to the to the board? engine. What if you just wrecked all my dreams? Well, you could probably do that in Gaslands. <laughs> Let's check it out. Uh, pardon? Uh, the sprues are from uh, North Star, um, North Star military figures. Uh, in the so in the UK and Europe, you can best to get them directly from North Star. Uh, if you're in the US, you can probably get them directly from Brigade Games. Um, so if you look up Brigade Games online, uh, the Gaslands book you should be able to get from your friendly local game store. Um, it is distributed by Alliance. Woohoo! Um, in the car here, uh, in the book here, sorry, let me find it out. The, uh, the idea is, here we go, building a vehicle. It's upside down. Oh, there we go. Building a vehicle, okay, it's on page 65. Um, Impart the knowledge from yes. page 65. So the, the first thing um, you do is choose a vehicle type, then you add weapons, noting the build slots required and declaring a facing for each weapon. Uh -huh. So, and then you add upgrades, noting the build slots required, and add perks from the permitted perk classes. So, the costs for everything here, rather than being done in dollars or in gold coins or anything like that, they're done in oil cans. <laughs> so, um, I think a typical game is probably around 
100 cans, 150 okay. cans. Uh, and if you have a like a 50 can car, that's pretty fierce. There's a lot of stuff going on in that car. Uh, basic vehicle types are uh, buggies, cars, performance cars, trucks, as in pickup trucks, uh, heavy trucks, and buses. Okay. Uh, each of those things has a like a hull rating, which is the number of wounds that it has. It has a handling class, which is uh, something that comes into, um, basically it's how, how well you can turn and what um, an impact it has on um, skid checks and things that you have to do later on. A max gear, which uh, determines how far you can, well, in the game, there are gear phases or gear steps. So everybody does their, everybody who's in first gear, they all activate. Then everybody who's in second gear, activate again. Everybody who's in third gear, activate again. Fourth gear, activate again. So if you're in sixth gear, you can be flying around the track. Something like a bus, however, has a maximum gear of three. So surprise, I can't have surprise. a flying bus. Uh, we, we might be able to get to it. It's, cost, <laughs> it's going to cost you a lot of cans, but um, and the bus starts at thirty cans. Oh wow! Uh, different vehicles have different levels of crew and different numbers of build slots. So when you pick a um, machine gun or a heavy machine gun or a mini gun or something like that, mm -hmm. it costs you one build slot as well as a certain number of cans. Okay. So like the minigun costs five cans and one build slot. So your, uh, what have you picked? You picked a truck? Yes. Okay, your truck has three build slots and starts at 15 cans. So if you put a minigun on there, you've taken up one of those build slots and it's cost you an extra five cans, so 20 cans so far. Uh-huh. All right, so let's see what the chat says. A lot of people are saying they really enjoyed uh, playing the Gaslands game that they've yep. been able to. Yep. Um. It's definitely a good one. I will mention here there's a list of advanced vehicle types as well. Yeah. Do you want to hear those? Yes. Okay, so we have drag racer, bike, bike with sidecar, ice cream truck. I want to have <laughs> an ice cream truck. An ice cream truck. Can I have an ice cream gun? Can I have a freeze ray? Sure. If I have an ice cream truck, yep. I feel like that's appropriate. We'll find something that's, that's it's appropriate not quite, for it. We can, yep. we can figure out how to make it Mad Maxi. <laughs> it's fine. Definitely. I would demolish people in an ice cream truck. It would be pretty cool. I would play music while I did it. <laughs> you can also have a gyrocopter, an ambulance, a monster truck, a helicopter, a tank, and a war rig. We were talking about war rigs earlier. War rigs very much based on Mad Max Fury Road. The war rig from there. Oh, here we go. Advanced weapons doesn't have, uh, it has death ray. There's arc lightning projector. If there's a death ray but not a freeze ray, I'm gonna be really sad. Prepare for sadness. <gasps> Give me a pen and I'll write it in. <laughs> we'll just cross out death ray and replace it with freeze. Hey, that's not, you can't have like maniacal villainous weaponry, <laughs> but not include that. Like I saw flamethrower, death ray, no freeze ray. And no, I'm not sure that Mike who wrote the, the book is a, ice cream um, truck. He's, he might not be a fan of the running man. <laughs> uh, but yeah, vehicle upgrades or oh, experimental nuclear engine. There we go. But you can have armor plating, you can have rams, you can have explosive rams. But I can't have... <laughs> Nitro boosters. Next time around, next time around. I'm gonna, I'm gonna send a, a strongly worded letter. <laughs> cool. Being like, I don't understand your yeah. logic, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Gaslands itself is set in a, um, in a world where basically the the climate has collapsed. Um, all the wealthy people have fled to Mars. As you do. Um, and fairly quickly, it was determined that Mars, uh, well, basically I think the Martian colonies turned around and were like, well, we don't need to be governed by Earth. In fact, we should probably govern Earth. So they 
to As you back did. around. There was a there was a battle. They took over. Um, that's the TLDR version. Um, but now Gaslands is a televised event. So there's a series of scenarios or races that happen every Saturday night or whenever they want to have, have them. But the, uh, they are then televised on Mars. Okay. Uh, so you have sponsors. Each, each team of um, cars has a sponsor. It could be um, Rutherford, who are very military focused. Uh-huh. Um, I'm liking this image going on here. Yep. There's uh, Miyazaki who are all about, I um, think, uh, Tokyo Drift all right. from Miyazaki. Uh, Mishkin is all about um, hardcore technology. Uh, what else do we have here? I don't know, but I uh, definitely see... Idris are all about speed. Cars. Yeah, there's some great ones there. Slime. Uh, slime rules a wild and feral city in the Australian wastes, known as anarchy. <laughs> Young people crawled out of the wreckage of the scorched earth in their thousands to rally around her ragged banner. The wild-eyed and whooping joyful gangs of anarchy are led by slime sensual and the chooks who seek fame and adoration in the global Gaslands audience. As an Australian, do you think... All of my teams that I've ever made have all been slime. Because um, they're... Yeah, so they have the perks that you can get come from different trees. So you can have, like, precision or speed. Uh, slime have tuning and reckless. So they have a lot of great well, abilities. Well, I mean, I feel like if you had already su- survived like a climate apocalypse in Australia, yeah. what more do you have to fear? I don't know. Not much, really. <laughs> There's the Warden, uh, who I think uh, the 2008 version of Death Race okay. with Jason Statham. Uh, there is Scarlet, uh, so I think Pirates for them. There's the Highway Patrol. Uh, there are... V- there's Verney, um, who are, uh, so it says, many have taken the bent deal offered by Warden Cordelia, but only one has ever earned their freedom. As a skilled engineer, as skilled an engineer as he is a driver, the new, newly freed Verney now specialize in building unique Frankenstein's monsters of vehicles for anyone who can afford his high quality customs. So that sounds pretty cool. Uh, and Maxine is the current grease smeared face of the Black Swans. Ooh. Mm. Order of the Inferno, Beverly the Devil on the Highway, Rusty's Bootleggers. So all sorts of cool stuff, and then you get perks to add to your car and that sort of kind of thing. So um, you can't just go go to town and have Pattern. a lot of fun. Where's my pumpkin pie, Dave? We will get to pie. Pie later. You gotta be patient. Patient for pie. Cool toy cars first. Pies later. <laughs> so um, is that the dad voice coming out? It is. <laughs> Watch yourself. Uh, <laughs> hey, Victor, on the YouTubes. All right. Trying to figure out what would look cool. On the... I, I'm, like, rough drafting my, my vehicle first. That's cool. Uh, something like a ram, which looks like you're about to put on there. Yeah, something like this. An um, extra tire in case I need that. Yeah, that yeah. sounds like a thing. Definitely. I'm um, trying to think of what to do with the bed of the truck. Right. Uh, maybe pop the, um, what do you call it? The tool chest? Yeah, tool that could work. The, uh, the RAM would be one build slot. Mm-hmm. So if you have a, um, oh, you've already, oh, you've got the harpoon launcher? Yeah. Cool. I'm going to put that on top there. I feel like that, that looks intimidating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's one of my favorite pieces is the harpoon launcher. Uh, so the uh, hub and launch, launch would be one build slot. The um, oh. call it? the um, RAM would be another build slot. And uh, one thing that's very important to do or not to do is to spill your super glue all over your fingers. <laughs> because now the thing won't stick to my fingers, but my fingers are stuck to my fingers. I know. Is this, is this also appropriate glue it's to use? Yeah. Uh, yep. So. Okay. Here oh, we go. Yep. 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 That'd be just fine. But uh, yeah, for this we're we're gluing um, plastic parts onto mostly metal um, pieces. So super glue is the 
the key for that. Oh, you got it? Yep, I got it. Cool. Uh, and it pop a little, um, like, flare launches on the back here. One of the things I mentioned there is that uh, you can build a, build a, when you're building a car, uh, when you pick your weapons or your equipment, you get to choose which direction um, faces. So if you just buy like a harpoon launcher, for example, and you've got it pointing forward, you can say, okay, this is a forward facing one. Mm -hmm. So as you're racing around the track, you can shoot that at anybody who's in your front arc. Ah, right. okay. You can't shoot that at anybody in your side or rear. You can, however, buy a turret. So turret, turret costs a little bit more, but turret allows you to shoot it in any direction, at any, any target. So uh, the turret, of course, does cost quite a bit of, quite a few cans but it doesn't add to your uh, build slots, which is good. But uh, This putting yeah. things together Ooh. stuff is challenging. Uh, challenging. <laughs> my dexterity and my ability to not make an entire big mess. Right. You can do it, I have confidence. I don't craft very often. <laughs> I know that with my affinity for glitter, that doesn't seem true. Right. But it is. I, I do not, in fact, craft very often at all because I make mess. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I am going to, um, so I'm going to put a turret on this one. So on the sprue, you get a little turret ring. Um, and what weapon should I give it? What is, I, I'm going to throw it out mm. to the chat. Should we get a 30 caliber machine gun? Should we go for a on the sprue? Yeah. Uh, so basically, you got. Um, I think essentially it's a 30 cal, maybe a 50 cal caliber machine gun here, or a. Um, it looks like an MG 42, which is another. It's a German machine gun from World War II. Or should I go for a minigun? Which will obviously throw out loads of bullets. What do people think I should put into the turret? Huh. What's that? Also, don't lick the glue. Don't lick the glue? <laughs> I, I will avoid licking the glue. What I do actually need to do is wipe the Nozzle there. The, the glue from your fingers? Just the, just the nozzle there. All good. And I can fold this up and put that away. <laughs> 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 oh, everyone's saying minigun. I was hoping everybody was saying say minigun. <laughs> Miniguns are cool. There's a uh, fantastic piece of footage that uh, that occasionally surfaces on the uh, Gaslands Facebook group uh -huh. of um, I think some guys from a um, who are uh, veterans who run a coffee company now uh -huh. uh, might be like Death Wish Coffee or something like that I have not tried Death Wish Coffee but I really <laughs> want to but uh, they they got a Prius and they mounted a, um, a Vulcan minigun uh, on it and then fired it off. And while it's firing, the, the car is right, rolling right back like this, but it's, it looks suitably over the top um, and would be perfect in gas lines. I'm sure that the, 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 the gas mileage would go down if you were driving and firing that at the same time, but. Well, I've got that drying. I'm going to um, pop a few cars that I've brought along. I'm going to pop those on the spinner. Um, 
I was telling everybody earlier that I'm a huge Mad Max fan. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Um, and Mad Max Fury Road is when we started getting into vehicular car combat games. So a friend of mine um, who played a lot of uh, car wars in his youth. Mm -hmm. And so we, um, we started playing some car wars. I might, I'm just gonna pop the, gonna pop the book behind that. Is that gonna work? Ooh. Maybe. Yep, maybe. Um, so yeah, when we started playing, I was like, uh, it was just before Fury Road came out. So I spent a lot of time scouring the internet for pictures of the different vehicles. So this is uh, how Max's car looks right at the start of that movie. Did huh? You're good? Yeah, I'm oh, good. Cool. Yeah. Excellent. I'm waiting for this to, to dry a little dry. bit. The, the bed of the truck doesn't align perfectly flush with the toolbox. Oh, okay. So right. I, I finagled <laughs> it around a little bit and added a little bit of extra glue on the bottom to try to keep it secure, cool. trying Neat. to find where it does line up nicely. Black Rifle. Black Rifle. Cool. Yep, Black Rifle Coffee Company. So you can find them on Facebook and go and check out that insane video. Uh, yes, so this is how um, Max's car looks at the start of Fury Road. And what I did after I built this one was I actually sculpted up a set of parts that you can add to Ooh. the uh, XB, the 73 XB Ford Falcon, um, which this car is. And um, that's available from Brigade Games as well. But all the fun um, stowage in the back and the headlights and that kind of thing are all a little bit different. Uh, and as I said, Max's car appears like that at the start, but then later on is turned into this one. Which is... <laughs> Um, which is called, uh, the car itself is called Razor Cola. Okay. I was telling you, Leona, all of the, um, all the, well, it's like 80 cars in the film that have names that are recognized as character cars. So That's crazy. Yep. That was Razor Cola. This is one of the first ones that I did. That I converted, which is based on one of the, um, the Raiders at the start. The, um. I love the rust. Yeah. So this one uses a, uh, is based on a Volkswagen uh, Beetle body. And this is one where I definitely, I, I, drew, tell anymore. I drilled out the rivets and pulled it apart, extended the, the frame. I used some parts from uh, Wyoming 40,000 from my bits box to make the, the engine oh, lock there. Nice. Uh, and then because I was gonna be using it in, um, in some games of Gaslands, I added the uh, the minigun poking out the window. But, yeah, that was a lot of fun to mess around with. Oh, gotta be careful, you're gonna get tetanus. <laughs> uh, the war rig is escorted by two, two cars. I know the name of this one is Elvis. <laughs> the one that fell off is Elvis. But uh, the, I don't know the name of the other one. But I did find the, found the car at a local flea market, which oh, is cool. Oh, wow. Yeah. If you're wandering around flea market with your significant other from flea markets and you're not sure what to look for, cars. <laughs> Toy, toy cars. Is I, the I'll way take to the rest of these and I'll just put them in my Christmas stocking. <laughs> right, okay, yes. <laughs> That'd be cool. Uh, oh, yep. yep. Uh, I did a Gaslands car with two GW uh, work arms. Orc arms yeah. sticking out the windows, holding guns, very rat fink. <laughs> yep. Because uh, one of the things that's, um, that's very interesting working with, uh, like, in t tabletop wargaming, we always talk about different scales and talk about 20 millimeter, 28 millimeter, 32 millimeter, that kind of thing, 40 millimeter gaming, or uh, something like Flames of War is 15 millimeter. Mm -hmm. and each of those has like a corresponding scale in, um, where something like uh, 28 millimeter is about 1 50th scale, so one inch on the miniature equals 50 inches in real life, roughly. Um, the cars for Gaslands, oh, for, well, Gaslands is 
basically written for Matchbox and Hot Wheels cars. So all the scaling is done around that. That's really clever. But the, uh, the funny thing with Matchbox cars and Hot Wheels cars is that they're really designed to fit into the, the packaging. <laughs> so while they're ostensibly a 1 64th scale, mm -hmm. none of them <laughs> make a perfect. Uh, so, I mean, you can see that crazy rat, rat rod there. And this is like a, um, oh, is it going the other way now? There we go. So there's this truck, which is a it's a tow it's a tow truck that's meant to tow um, other like <laughs> semi yeah um, tractors. But you can see it's obviously way too small for that. But it does look exactly like one of the cars from Fury, Fury Road. So it kind of looks like the Fury Road version of the car from Cars. Oh, Mater? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does look a bit like that. It does look a bit like that, for sure. Um, uh, but yeah, I had a lot of fun doing all sorts of things. Um, I learned with this one. So this is a um, Corvette Stingray. And in the... Um, all the, the photos of mm -hmm. it, the pre-photos. You could see all the scuffing where the black paint had been worn off. But I wasn't sure if it was rust or if it was red paint underneath. And when you ask these questions online, you find, discover fairly quickly that... No one else knows either? No, everybody <laughs> else knows. Uh, and that <laughs> the Stingray, or the Corvettes are all fiberglass. Oh. So the body is not going to rust. Oh. Or at least stingrays are all fiberglass. That's really cool. So it was definitely red paint from underneath it, uh, sort of scuffed from underneath. So of course I had to paint the red, and then I've added some dust over the top of that red, so it has a slightly rusty right. look at the front. So Bob Stoffel has a very good argument for gluing the wheels, and it's the only one I'll allow. Right. What is okay. it? Okay. He says that a good reason to view the uh, to glue the wheels if you're going to have them for like an actual miniatures game is because he's knocked them and not have the wheels glued. Right. And then they rolled away. That's a very good reason. And that's, things get that's broken. That's probably subconsciously the reason that I glue all my wheels. <laughs> rolled down the table losing its exact position, which matters whenever you're playing. Yeah. Um, well, in Gaslands and in some other vehicular car combat games, um, or vehicular, vehicular combat, uh, Sometimes they, uh, they recommend you have bases for the cars. So I that, like that. So that regardless of the size, so this could be, this might be a performance car, this Mini might be a performance car, but if they're all on the same, um, so two different size cars might be on the same base, Sorry. then it's, no, you're good, you're good, you're fine. Um, can be on the same base, but. <laughs> Sorry, book. You're going over there. Yeah, it's not the one we're giving away, so it's okay. That's true. It's true. It's just fine. It's just fine. I feel fine. That's what I meant by well loved by Dave. <laughs> Wait. Oh yeah. Maybe that will work. No, I don't know. Here, we'll here. get there ooh, eventually. Ooh, I got. Okay, so I'll take. Okay. Paintbrush. We're gonna plan. There, and it'll. Perfect. I moved it to the left. <laughs> <laughs> We, we super prepared for this show. Super prepared. <laughs> How's that look? How's that look on the spinner? Hello. Fantastic. That'll be fine. Um, but, uh, yeah, so if you have uh, bases, uh, obviously you can either you glue your base, your, your car to the base, mm -hmm. and then it's not going to roll. Or I have seen people glue magnets to the underside of their car and the top of the base. So they can do both. They can play the game with it on a base, magnetized, but then afterwards they can take it off and roll it around and have fun. I and, like that. And make broom broom noises. Broom broom. Broom broom. So uh, this, this car that's on the spinner at the moment is the Nux car from Fury Road. Very uh, silver. Very silver. <laughs> um, it's a really tough one to find. Uh, I found this when I was on my 10-year wedding anniversary trip to Italy 
Wow. So it's I like found a gift for you. It was, yeah. <laughs> it was like uh, this is all I need. <laughs> You can go home now. You don't even need to stay in Italy. Pretty much. Yeah. I, I was well. I was like, uh, can we go home now so I can start working on this? <laughs> My wife was like, we still have four more days. Uh, mm. But uh, yeah, so this was it was a lot of fun to work on that. Definitely cool. Uh, Casey sure. says, or Cassie says, where do you say you get the sprues from in the U.S.? Uh, sprues uh, in the U.S. The sprues from uh, Brigade Games. So if you just do a Google search for Brigade Games. Uh, you will find them. David Kraut says, I keep forgetting it's on Thursday. Finally made it. Yeah. Welcome, cool. Dave. Cool. We're here. So. All right. Yeah. Oh, cool. You put that. Yeah. I, I was able to. Should I have a, put this yeah. under the close cam? Careful. I think I got more glue on my fingers than on not, the actual Not than I did. On vehicle. me. I got way more on me. So let's just have a quick <laughs> look at this. Okay. So we've got the, the, uh, the very cool. I wish my harpoon first gun. car had a harpoon gun. Yeah. <laughs> I think it'd be perfect. The uh, ram bars at the front, the tool chest in the back, a little bit of uh, decking there. Yeah. You know, because if you're, if you're handling the uh, harpoon gun, you oh, yeah. stabilize that. Definitely. Also, if someone rear-ends you, I feel like that's more. Like... Right, yeah, it's going to keep you together. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Very cool. That's a great truck. I've got that going on. Up on the turret there. Okay, uh, so yes, let's have a quick look at uh, some cool minis that you guys have posted in the uh, Facebook group over the last week. Michael Gonzalez, a few random minis I finished up. Oh. Uh, yeah, very cool. There's, uh, there's some neat ones. I recognize um, there's a orc spanner boy, or an orc mech. There, with uh, on the left-hand photo. I like the, the icy-looking woman who's like floating. Yep. that's a cool. That's a really cool sculpt. That's from uh, Malifo. Oh. I think that is Rasputina. Um, she is one of the. I think that's one of the older sculpts of her. But Ra Ra Rasputina. Ra, Ra, Rasputina. Yep. She looks like she could be. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> she does look super cool. I trust doesn't her she? with pom poms. All I'm saying. Oh yeah, for sure. I would. Uh, oh, that looks. But cool. yes, uh, great work there, Mike. Um, Josh, the Giga Bowser version. Is that, where's that from? Giga Bowser? Is that Fallout? I don't know. I think it's Giga Bowser version. Oh, okay. He's painted his toes like Bowser. Okay. Radio. That's but it looks very cool. Yeah. I think uh, the, particularly the, the red in the mouth. Oh, yeah. Is working really well against that, uh, the green scales down the back. Nice choice there. Good work. Ooh. I remember these guys. Yeah. And Rising Sun models. Yeah, I painted the one on the left. <laughs> well, not that not that particular one. Patrick's painting that one, but I have painted that model. But yeah, and yeah. I, I believe I am the one who painted the uh, the, 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 dog. the temple dog. Yeah, the temple dog. Yep. They're looking looking very cool. So like much it. details on those models. Yeah. Yep. Very beautifully done, Patrick. Looking great. Jan, oh, Bloodseeker Minotaur, Miniature. <laughs> <laughs> nice pun there, Reaper. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's looking very nice. I always love the um, Minotaurs done in that um, that reddish brown. Yeah. That, uh, okay. sort of, that I think it goes really well tinge, with the horns. Tinge. You follow the line of the horns, and then it, you immediately notice the ring. It brings, yeah, it brings yeah. everything in around that. So even though that uh, that um, Reddish brown is very dark. Yeah, everything guides you towards that. Those eyes, definitely cool. Nice work. Oh, just some recent, some recent projects. projects. So uh, I'm not sure where that miniature is on the left. Is from, but she's looking really good, James. Very nice. And the one on the right, I think, is a um, a Marauder bomber from Aeronautica Imperialis, if I'm not mistaken. Which is the new um, plain combat game from Games Workshop. But yeah, they're both looking great. Very nice. Ooh. Simon Testa, next warband for. Um, this is for Underworlds, Warhammer Underworlds. I like the lava effect. 
yeah. going on there. I it feel does like look really hard. cool, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. It's hard to do good lava crackly, kind of. Yep. I think, uh, yeah, Simon's done a, a really nice job on it, definitely. Looking cool. Oh, Reaper Fire Dragon. Jason's working on this. Looking good. I wonder, Jason, if you're going uh, to be putting a base on that, uh, like a larger base, or are you going to keep it uh, fairly tight so it's easier to move around on terrain? That's always the balance, I think, is choosing which of those two things you're going to do. But uh, it's coming along nicely, Jason. Looking good. Oh, Drew has finished his custom, uh, custom captain. Uh, painted to look like himself. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think so. Okay. <laughs> yep. Drew's beard's getting pretty, uh, pretty big. So, <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd say that. Wow, that looks like Drew. I would say that's deliberate. It's deliberate for sure. But uh, yeah, looking great, Drew. Very nice. Work there. Oh, Mike. Some recent, uh, most recent projects. Oh. Yep. A very cool uh, beholder, and. That dragon's looking very nice. Look at photography, too. Yeah. Like, that yeah. whole setup is just, like, you, I'd imagine that on, like, a miniature's web page, like, something. Right. <laughs> like yep. Very professional. The paint job, professional. The photography, professional. professional. Yep. Those uh, black backdrops always <laughs> give you that that feel. Um, Mike and Josh and I were chatting very, uh, like, just before the show in the, on the Painting Happy Little Me's page. We were talking about um, putting photos up on Instagram and oh, yeah. that sort of thing. So Mike started putting up uh, sort of like step-by-steps mm -hmm. on Instagram. Uh, and the question he asked is, how do we go about doing 25? If there are 25 steps, how do I go about doing that? Good luck. Because I don't want to be the person who <laughs> floods people's feeds with all sorts of stuff there. So this, uh, once I get back home, I'm going to jump back into that conversation. But yeah, looking cool, Mike. Well, Instagram Very has nice. a lot of new options going on right now that can help yeah. streamline that, especially if you have something that takes multiple steps. Yep, yep, definitely cool. Uh, Tom Gush uh, Dushkowitz, a Reaper miniature, that is cool. Again, that, that very nice um, lava look. Oh yeah, it looks glowy yep. even. And on the uh, on the um, dog. And with the base being such a light color, demonic. I feel like it's even harder to get that glow effect without the contrast. Yeah, yep. Like, but instead it's all, it still looks glowy and also the, the ground looks ash. Like it does look ashy. Yeah, dusted of ash. So. Yeah. That looks cool. What was that, Leona? It's a puppy. It's a puppy? <laughs> it is, it's a good it's, boy. It's a good boy, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> I don't care if it's a hellhound, it's a good boy. Richard Ankney. No, never really? heard of him. Yeah, Never I don't know about this one. <laughs> Painting up some Crisis Protocol, <laughs> which I think launched uh, last weekend? Weekend before. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, um, and there obviously is the Hulk and uh, MODOK. Is it MODOK? I think so. But they use the first two uh, expansion pieces for um, Crisis Protocol. I'm sure we'll see plenty more in the future. But yeah, looking good, Rick. Very nice. Brian Nance. Look at that paint setup. That's nice. That's, That's organized. That is super organized. Is that always that organized, or is or is this a photo <laughs> to make us think it's always that organized? Sometimes I have a dream where I'm a different person <laughs> and not like messy as all get out. My desk is organized right now, but I have no paint equipment out because right. we're going to be moving. Yeah, my, my desk is not at all. I keep telling organized. myself it'll be that organized once I move yep. for more than one day. Right. I, um, <laughs> I, I know. I, I can have all the dreams in the world that I like about if I was to move to a new place, I could set everything up and have it all organized and neat and tidy. But I just know that that's pointless. But, uh, I'm about to sneeze. <laughs> but I, I didn't. Good. <laughs> I am envious, Brian. It looks fantastic. And the, the cool color chart there is from uh, Mini Painting Studio. Oh, wow. So, Josh. Yeah, definitely uh, definitely neat. Hopefully, we'll get some of those in here soon. Hint, hint, Josh. <laughs> um, <laughs> ah, Don Slater, my buddy from uh, New York City. Uh, some, adding some very cool builds. Um, the So, he's putting in some, like, big... Uh, sci-fi weapons into ah. these historical uh, historical miniatures. Um, so the big 
gun there that's in the, the right is from uh, Dust. But yeah, so he's doing his, his own mashups, which is really cool. Looking good, done. Can't wait to see them painted. Deep Madness <laughs> art. Current color shift painted bases. Does that These, mean they, they actually shift in color? I think the bases do, yeah. Hmm? Yeah. We're blind, Leona. <laughs> we're, we are. We're, we're, we're far coming, away. <laughs> we're far away. We have the lights on us. But no, they um, they look very, very cool. Very, uh, like... I like the ombre. I, I feel like if the, <laughs> if the colors are shifting and you have that ombre, it leads yep. more into that kind of illusion that they are changing their colors as you're playing with them. Yeah. But they're, uh, they are looking cool. They're frightening. <laughs> Terrifying even. Lined up like that, though, they kind of look like they're dancing. This is true. <laughs> the, the most terrifying chorus line ever. I was thinking like YMCA, okay. but yeah, sure. that's cool. That's chorus line. It's the same thing. Uh, <laughs> June from Junebug Minis. Uh, this is looking very nice. Very nice. Um, first metal mini completed. Oh, Ooh. Wow. I wonder if this is an old, um, an older Reaper model. But it's looking, uh, looking very cool. I love that glaive. Um, that it's carrying, but I it, it, I really love the the red skin. You've done a great job on that, June. Looking very nice. Except for now. Cool. Woohoo! Excellent. All okay. Right. And I I'm just gonna just quickly finish up using I'm some of the tap this glue. The super glue that I spilled on my palette. And I'm going to pretend that it's not messy inside. Right. <laughs> awesome. Uh, I can. Uh, on the spinner? Or? On the spinner. Cool. Oh. There we go. <laughs> I like them. Yep. Looking cool. Yep. There we go. Does he have a name? Well, he looks like the grandpa version of my car that I first had, which was old blue. So, uh, like old, old blue. <laughs> ancient blue? Paw Paw Blue. Paw Paw Blue. Yeah. Yeah? That'd yeah. be cool. Excellent. <laughs> Let's go with that. Paw Paw Blue. Paw Paw Blue. Now, I'm going to okay. show something, um, something amusing on this one. Okay. So, I've got the. Oh! <laughs> See? That's the amusing part, is because I haven't glued the, haven't glued the wheels. Okay, we'll come back to it. We'll come back to it later once I fixed it up. But the amusing part was going to be that the um, that the crewman who is manning the turret um, has, uh, like, in this car you can look through and see that it doesn't have any legs. Oh no! So, well, are there legs for you to put in there? No, there are no legs on the sprue. And that's mainly because. A lot of cars that when you uh, prime them. Oh, not quite. There's some legs here. Hmm? Not all oh, the legs. Oh, yeah, yeah. Not all the way. Not all the way. Not all the legs. Just, he Just could have the legs. thighs. But <laughs> what, what I can do is actually I can, I can grab some of the, um, the corrugated iron here, the corrugated sheets, and cut them up and put them over the windows. Oh. Like extra armor. Which is a thing you can take in Gaslands. <laughs> and that way, illusion secured. And I'm going to twist it a little bit so it looks a little bit rough along the edges. Everyone, you need to glue the wheels. How am I supposed to run Paw Paw Blue down the racetrack? We just need to be careful with the, the spinner is all. Nice. Maybe we can get some blue tacking. Drop them on that first. <laughs> but, uh, yes. So what do you name yours then? I don't know. What do you think would be a good name? It's like, at the moment it's like flashy and red, but I'm not sure if it would end up being red. Mm, true. What color do you, I, it's going to sound odd, but I'm, I'd be tempted to paint this gold. Yeah? Yeah. I so feel something it. Su I feel sort it. of super flashy. Chat, give us some names to name this car that will eventually be golden. Yeah. Maybe it won't be completely gold. I guess I'm going to want to 
rust up the, uh, the armor plates here. But uh, yeah. There we go. Now, we mentioned, uh, mentioned earlier that uh, a lot of people in the chat who have played Gaslands have had a lot of fun with it. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I really like about it is how quick it is to, to learn the game. Um, it's, it's involved. Um, the game, um, I'm just gluing those, I'm just gluing the wheels on this side so that so um, you can do circles. So when I stick it on the spinner, it won't uh, it won't roll. But I'll need to let that dry. Uh, uh, in, the, in the meantime, I'm going to pop this guy. We up have on some the really good names spinner. going on here. So we have Cinderella because you're getting her dressed for the ball. Oh, okay. Uh, Sunfire and Aurora. Oh. A lot of Disney princess names oh, yeah. going on in here. Yeah. yeah. Aurora. Yeah. Mm. Sunfire. I like Sunfire. Sunfire. Yeah. Very good. Gold dust. Oh, dust. Make it match the wrestler color. Oh, yeah. Isn't it a fighter car? Pardon? Isn't it a fighting car? You say a Disney car. princesses can't fight? <laughs> no. <laughs> what about Merida? Well, there you go. That's right. Got that Disney princess knowledge on lock. <laughs> I was going to say, what about uh, General Leia? Oh. Organa. Mm -hmm. General Organa. But, uh, yes. Um, this is my last one I'm going to show from my Mad Max Fury Road cars. This is uh, Bigfoot, who is driven uh, by uh, a character played by a wrestler, Nathan, I think Nathan Long, uh, called Rictus Erectus. Oh. That doesn't seem compensational at all. Not at all. Not at all. Uh, but yeah. This is one where uh, the top section, mm -hmm. the chassis, is... Uh, it was not what was originally on the the frame, so um, it replaced. It was a, a regular car, drilled out those rivets, um, did some conversion work at the front to match the um, Bigfoot from the the movie, and uh, have gone there. <laughs> yeah, Richard Tyler says I should name it Goldie, but John Dickerman has the cutest name by far, which is Nugget. Nugget, like a little golden nugget. Nice one. Good work, John. That's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to show two other cars that I, I brought that I like. Um, I used to drive a PT Cruiser, a silver, a silver PT Cruiser. Uh, my buddy Nathan from Texas uh, found one of these and <laughs> sent it to me. Uh, so I converted it. Uh, and as you can see, I added some armor plating, um, added those big exhausts, flamethrower on top and uh, rusty flames at the front. <laughs> so, and obviously jacked it up. I like it. But it does look a lot like my old car, except for those things that I mentioned. <laughs> I was gonna say, I thought your old car was just only those things you was mentioned. Was only those things that I mentioned? Yeah. Yep, it's the only thing that's left. Uh, and I'll pop this one on. It's a good color. So this it's one. A good teal. Was, so once I started getting into it and was doing a lot of the cars, whenever my um, daughters would go anywhere, no. they'd ask my wife to buy a car so we can give a car to dad. That's really cute. It's super cute. So they got this from um, Hershey Park. So this was a Hershey chocolate truck. So when I got it, it was like Hershey Brown mm -hmm. um, with a Hershey's logo on the side. And then, but it, yeah, I thought this is a fantastic farm truck. It is. And that. And the sort Tiffany's of, blue. That, that, really. Yeah, that is. What would you call it? What? Tiffany's blue. Tiffany's blue, is that what it is? Yeah, like cool. the, the jewelry company. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know if they've trademarked that blue, but okay. it's the, what everyone calls the blue that they use. Okay, oh, yeah. yeah. So it's yeah. super similar to that. Yeah, it's, that tealish it's, got, it's got a little bit of teal in it. Yeah, yeah okay. kind of blue. Well, that's neat. I did not know that. But uh, yeah, <laughs> super happy. Uh, but of course, this one I put two miniguns in because if one minigun is good, two miniguns is way better. Uh, Byron uh, says, spiked up ambulance with a uh, winch to rescue car. And Craig says, hey, you need to do a Mad Max version of Herbie the Love Bug. Oh, well. <laughs> As we move into the painting version of this. Oh, actually, one thing I'll just show under the close cam. I'm going gonna to move this. All the bullets in the back? Yeah. I made some crates. 
crates full of <laughs> full of rounds, full of ammunition there. So this could be in my my bullet farmer um, yeah. section. So bullet farmer, one of the characters from Mad Max. Uh, and I have the parts at home to make the bullet farmer's car, the peacemaker, huh. which is cool. But anyway, um, eventually I'll do it, and then I'll bring it on the show, and we'll go from there. <laughs> Uh, but yes, so we've built some cars. Um, we just wanted to show those the super cool sprues again on the close cam. So this is it kind of picked over for these couple of cars. So essentially, um, let me just show them up here. Oh, no, okay. Over <laughs> here. Leona's all over the place today. Just kidding. Yeah, bring it back over here. Okay, so two... Two sprues, um, basically five, seven cars. We've made seven cars out of half of two sprues. So loads of cool stuff still left on there. Um, Flamethrower, there's canister dropper in the back. Um, so you can drop smoke charges or oil canisters, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, so super cool sprues. Definitely gives you loads and loads and loads to work with. Uh, talking about Herbie the Love Bug. This might still roll off. He's good. But, uh, yep, popping that on the, the spinner. Oh. It's cute. So it's that's so a, cute. yeah, it's a crazy sort of, uh, well, you can see those wheels starting to move. Crazy like Baja version of, uh, <laughs> of a Volkswagen. Ah, there we go. <laughs> Saved him. Uh, that. So that fr uh, chassis is the same as this chassis. Oh wow! Believe it or not. So I'm. It's like his cooler punk older brother. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Should call this one tetanus. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, we've got that one. We've got this mini to paint as well. So this is the one I added the the cool exhaust to the side. And you're just having fun rolling those cars around, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> it is so much fun. So we have that one to work on. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the, like the 30s rat rod kind of feel. So let's even keep that one on there. This particular um, car is a super common uh, one for Hot Wheels. Uh, it's called the Bone Shaker <laughs> and it has a skull sculpted onto it oh, already at the front. Yeah. But uh, it comes without the top. It doesn't have a, a roof on it. So that's what I figured that one was was going to be good for putting the crew in. So yeah. So I'm just going to uh, show you this under the close cam as well, Leona. Moving it here. Look at that. Seamless. Uh, Craig says, uh, is that a bunch of toothpicks for the spikes? Uh, actually, no. It's a, a bunch of um, plastic card pieces, oh. sort of plas uh, styrene strips cut up. You can't quite see them yet, but I'll get some paint on these and we've got to spot the two crew in there. So one guy manning uh, twin 50 cal machine guns and one guy driving. Uh, didn't need to add any exhausts because they already come on the, the bit, which is super neat. Uh, and then I have this guy, another sort of rat rod style. Uh, let me put, turn it that way. Uh, and this one I put a um, missile launcher on front, like a rack of, there's a rack of five missiles. So if you really want to blow something up. Oh, wow. And it's going around. And a little bit of uh, corrugated metal on the back for armor. And the plating. And then finally, I haven't done a Rutherford team before. The Rutherford are like the heavy military kind of guys. So this truck, though, really screamed. Um, Rutherford. So I've got a heavy, a nice big ram on the front there, minigun on top. And then um, on the on the sprue, there's also a um, just a big exhaust, kind of truck-like exhaust stack, which is neat. So I've used that on this, this one. So this would be like a heavy truck. I like it. Which would be cool. So in the game, when it it's got that ram, so it's going to run people down. It's going to gun them as it's coming in, and then when it hits them, poof, it'll explode like confetti. Um, 
but yeah. Cool. Okay, so uh, I think it's probably about time we jumped into painting. Yeah. So we'll move some of these out of the way. Oh, I definitely can go with something bright and colorful. That I feel like it's a little cute punch buggy, and I kind of want to keep it cute, but also deadly. Right here. Yeah. So what do you think? Oh, I know. What? Oh, I have a suggestion. Oh, what's your suggestion? I don't know. Yellow. That's what I was thinking. Okay, yeah, for the punch bug yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah. Right, but also, um, you could do some black stripes on it. So it's kind of like a um, bumblebee. Oh, I could do the bumblebee thing. Mm, bumblebee kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Or you could go for a rainbow kind of. Or I could do a hippie mobile. <laughs> hippie mobile. That would be really funny. <laughs> the fu a bunch of like paint some little stickers on the hat. <laughs> the funny, th the funny thing about the uh, the mini uh -huh. is that it started out with um, peace symbols and, and little <laughs> love and peace and flowers, See, we like were flower connected. decals we all over it. We knew. Yeah, yeah. So when I replaced it with the the two air-cooled machine guns and the <laughs> the mine dropper at the back. I kind of got rid of that. Who knows? I have a few different ideas. But yeah. I'll start with yellow, though. I think that would be start cool. Start with yellow, see how, see how we progress. Goes. Cool. But I'll just uh, remind everybody that we are uh, working with Osprey Games Gaslands Refueled today. Uh, obviously, um, well, maybe not obviously, but uh, Osprey Games don't make miniatures for this. <laughs> uh, so we're working with Hot Wheels and Matchbox cars. And we're working with um, weapons and equipment from uh, Sprue called Implements of Carnage from North Star uh, figures in the UK or Brigade Games you can get them from in the US. But uh, that's what we're doing. And we're giving away a copy of Gaslands Refueled. Uh, all you have to do is pop into the chat and uh, use the hashtag Refueled as uh, Leona has down in the bottom corner of the screen. Uh, Craig also says, this is a, uh, pointed out Bumblebee would be great, but also uh, someone needs to also arm the mystery machine. Uh, yes, I think that I think that, ha that has been done, for sure. I feel like um, every time they should, every time they attack, just a zoinks. <laughs> zoinks. That would, that, that would be cool. Scoob. Jinkies. Um, Okay, uh, so I'm going to work on this one first, the um, the rat rod with the two, the bone shaker uh -huh. thing, um, and I'm going to so I'm going to show people my approach for what I like to call cultivated rust, which is what I think they do for the the, the, um, the what do you call them the war boys do in. Mad Max Fury Road, because I, no cars rust that evenly. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure they, they spend a lot of time cultivating it. Excellent, okay. So I'm gonna start with uh, some uh, Vallejo Tinny Tin. So it's a really dark brown metallic and get a big um, brush. Why is it brown when it's called tin? Hmm? Why is it brown when it's called tin? That's a really good question. I have no idea. Leona, asking the hard questions. Yes, that I'm swiftly ignoring. <laughs> so, uh, so once I've got it on the end of the brush there, uh, rather than dry brushing, like I might do with, normally with a brush like this, I'm gonna stipple. So just sort of jab it onto the all the spots that I want to have that cultivated rust look. And the reason that I'm stippling is that it adds texture. There's one thing that you want from a, a rusty look is something that has that that gritty, rusty texture. So jabbing that. In and around. It also makes this a really easy paint job. <laughs> <laughs> Which is cool. Because we get through this quickly, then I can do the, the Rutherford truck. Oh, I thought you were gonna say, then we could have pie. <gasps> yeah, that's right, we've got <laughs> pie. So we have to get through this quickly so we can get pie. Ooh, Sarah says, I'd love to see a mod on the Munster Mobile. That'd be cool, definitely. It's one of the, the cool things, obviously, with uh, 
so many different. There are a lot of uh, vehicular combat games out there. When I say a lot, there's probably like six or seven. Um, the one of the granddaddies of them is Car Wars from Steve Jackson Games. Um, that has gone through a whole bunch of different editions. Uh, Car Wars was actually designed for much smaller cars. It was actually a, like a chit game. So you had little cardboard chits with cars, like the, the top-down view of a car That's on it. That's adorable. Um, Did people just collectively decide to use Matchbox cars for them or something? Yeah, pretty much. Um, <laughs> pretty much every, every edition there was a... Um, uh, a mod that was done by, um, done by somebody, then latched on by other people and built up and that kind of thing so that you could use the Car Wars rules but use them for Matchbox cars. Uh, and they, I think next week, maybe, they've got uh, Kickstarter starting for 6th edition. Oh, thank you. For 6th edition um, Car Wars which is actually designed for 164th scale cars. And I think they're doing some cars along with it. So that's going to be fun to check out as well. I did play Car Wars um, back when I started, first started making these. So that was about four years ago, four or five years ago. So don't ask me any questions about the rules. Dave, what are all the rules? Any questions about any of the rules. <laughs> so, there we go. I'll make sure I hit the, the hubs. Okay. I'll dry off that brush. And then the next color that I use is uh, red leather. This is one of my favorite ones for that rust effect because it's, it's kind of that Perfect. It's not too, not too orange, but it does have a lot of orange in it. it the rest um, can be pretty bright. Yeah, yeah. That'll be my like my final step will be the fiery orange. <laughs> but uh, it's this has got just enough um, opacity to work over the um, to give a good sort of look over the tinny tin, but. Um, not so much that it does, that some of the tin tin doesn't show through. And this is where you can really build up the texture on there. You can, can't quite see that, but yeah. So just on the back section there. But one of my favorite things about uh, seeing a lot of people enjoying games like uh, Gaslands is that Which? Did you, did you ever play Twisted Metal? No. Okay, well, that's what ice cream trucks. Okay, <laughs> cool. <laughs> yes. Glad to know everyone's on board the ice cream truck. Ice cream trucks are awesome. Sorry. That's cool. My buddy Mark has, a, has converted an ice cream truck. He also converted a, um, a tuk tuk, which is a little three wheeled vehicle. <laughs> and on the back of it, it has this enormous missile launcher. It's fantastic. <laughs> oh, um, Clive says, Dave, I may have missed this, but why did you glue on the parts before priming? Won't it make it harder to paint through the metal plating? Um, I, I must admit, I always glue the glue everything on beforehand. Um, once you, when you put down the primer and then the paint over the top, and then you glue onto that, um, you're piece is just glued to the, um, what do you call it, is just glued to the paint. And so that paint, uh, so the, the join is only as strong as the paint around it and it's bonding to the primer. And I'm not a huge um, believer in that, <laughs> the strength of that bond. <laughs> it's fine um, just with the, the paint normally. You can rub it a little bit like that, but if you come along and accidentally f flick the end of the guns here or something like that, um, the chances of it falling off are pretty considerable. So that's why I do it that way. A lot of folks do it other ways, 
And if that works for them, that's cool. But it doesn't work for me. I like to, to do it beforehand. Um, I do have a lot more faith in the um, in the factory um, factory paint job and its ability to hold because um, that goes through a lot of probably goes through an oven to bake it on. So um, yeah, that's why I'm okay with that. Relying on that, I guess. But as I said, there are a lot of folks who um, prefer to take the the paint all the way off. So they can glue directly to metal, and that is fine too. That's one of the things I was going to say. There's so many different ways to approach it, um, so many different ways to tackle it. Uh, experiment, find out what works for you. Um, the uh, the other thing as well is find find a cool aesthetic that you really like. You don't have to do Mad Max Fury Road, although I always will. Um, is that your brand? That's my brand. Yeah, totally. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's lots of different uh, lots of different looks you can go for. Um, you can go for very sleek, um, kind of uh, near future sci-fi kind of look where the guns will like pop up out of slots in the in the hood or be embedded in the. Um, in the headlights or that kind of thing. You can do my, my favorite, which is Rockabilly pinup vintage. Yep, you can do that, where everything is gingham. Everything is brightly colored and fun. Right. But also, fun weapons. Super edgy. Yes. Right, okay, yeah, I get it. Yeah. That's, that's the best. That. I would, if I had the time and the ability, I would paint a little pinup girl on the side of this. That would be cool. And it would be super cute. Yep. But I don't have the time for that. <laughs> so be disappointed. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. Well, we got about 40 minutes. What about 40 minutes? Oh, we got pie to have as well. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Pardon? Oh, to make it like shiny and stuff after? Or? Uh, you can. Um, again, that's up to you. Uh, because um, because I go for the the Mad Max aesthetic, nothing's really. Even though they say everything's shiny and chrome, nothing's truly shiny. It's all got that layer of dust over it. Um, but you should do a a version of it where it has wash me. Wash me, yeah. And yeah. <laughs> In the um, one of the things you can do as well, the grime. Uh, show that on the um, the windows here on on this one. So around these these window panes, I've got uh, I put on some um, weathering powders ah. to give that dirty dirty window kind of look. Good job. Yeah, and you can also uh, if you're not priming them and you're just going to paint over the original paint job. Some people like to leave the original paint job as well, paint the weapons and stick to that. Um, but you can also take uh, like matte varnish, paint on matte varnish and paint that over it to give that uh, you know, dusty I sort of effect. I wish I had the, deck, the ability to paint. What's that? Um, which I probably could if I focused really hard. Uh, my kid's an honor roll student. All right, on the back of the car. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool. That would be good. The other reason I like to glue the wheels, I've just learned, is that um, if they roll, they've got a really good chance of slipping out of your hands <laughs> while you're painting them. So. So a few, uh, probably a couple of months ago, I, I put together um, four other uh, four other vehicles using some resin prototypes from the implements of Carnage Frame. Mm. I think I posted them in the group. I'm not 100 percent sure, but um, they went out to uh, Wasteland Weekend with my buddy um, 
Alex, uh, my buddies Alex and Terrace. My friend Terrace runs um, Geek Nation Tours. And he was, uh, he and Alex were scouting out Wasteland Weekend, because next year they're going to run a tour there, uh, which will be a, a Gaslands tour, huh. which is pretty sweet. You head out there and... Um, <laughs> Craig, paint the stick figure family on it. That I might be able to actually do. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's a, that's a bit easier. Is that in uh, It's out in California, in the California desert. I think it's about, um, about two or three hours from L.A., depending on traffic. But uh, they have um, all sorts of things go on at that, <laughs> at that event. Uh, but uh, one of the big things they have is a, like a car um, parade, car rally, where people have spent all year creating post-apocalyptic vehicles. And then they have a big parade of them on Oh, and then they Saturday. get to finally show them all. They show them off to everybody. So, there we go. What do people think of that cultivated rust look? Very nice. That's pretty neat. So, as you can see, it's very simple to do as well. It took no time at all. And then you get to come back with some silvers. And hit up the the weapons and the the engine that kind of thing. Some black for the. Oh, maybe if I can get some of the silver out of this paint pot. I'm glad this is on the on the screen for everybody to see. There we go. There we go. Woohoo! <laughs> we would have switched it just at the wrong time. So there we go. But yes, yeah, so I'm kind of contemplating going on that tour. That'd be fun. I think you should. Yeah. Uh, apparently, at the at the show this year, there were a couple of people who um, had set up uh, like a Gasland track uh, and a little workbench, so you get to go and um, you have to sign up beforehand. But um, if you're signed up, you can go and build your own car and then have a game of Gaslands. Uh, which is really cool. Uh, one of the things that I really like about Gaslands is that there are a lot of people, um, a lot of car enthusiasts who have never played war games before, uh, have been brought into tabletop war gaming through Gaslands. Yeah, it's definitely a, it's something you wouldn't expect, really. Yeah, yeah, totally. Definitely makes sense, but uh, I still don't think I would have expected it. It is a cool thing. So the other thing as well is because these these cars are so small, mm -hmm. there's such small detail. You don't really need to have you don't need to go in and, and paint every little single detail. Oh. Uh, why don't you use that for wet palette, or is it? What do you use for the wet palette, or is it just a damp paper towel? Uh, this particular one, the wet palette, is a red uh, from a company called Red Grass Games, and that comes with um, with a packet of like fifty uh, sheets of paper, specific paper for it. Um, there, they they also sell. Um, sort of refill packs. Uh, I'm coming to the end of mine, so I need to pick up a refill pack soon. Um, there are other companies that make wet palettes that also sell um, specific paper for it. Uh, and I also have some friends that use, um, I think it's parchment paper, like cooking parchment paper. Yeah, that could work really yep. well. The, um, the idea is you, is you want, obviously you want moisture to be able to come through from the the sponge underneath to keep the, the paint wet. Uh, so whatever paper you use has to be able to transfer that moisture. Um, so something with a, um, 
a waxy finish wouldn't work at all as a wet palette. Now one of the one of the crew members in here has like a motorcycle helmet on. So I'm gonna paint the the front visor silver because that is very very Mad Max, that silver visor. So there we go. Very simple stuff so far, but pretty effective. And very slime. <laughs> These guys would totally be slime. Leona has a question? Yeah. Yep. How many cards do you need to paint? Oh, for a, uh, for a team? Yeah. Um, you'd be able to do, uh, I mean, you can start playing with one car. Really, there's, um, there's one event um, which is called Death Race, I think, uh, where everybody, ha like, you, you can have like eight people playing, six, seven, eight people playing, everybody has a single car. Uh, if you're playing sort of one-on-one -on -one games, um, probably three, four, five cars, depending on right. sort of what sort of approach you want. If you want to have a big car, like um, the monster truck, then uh, you, once you've paid for the monster truck, you're not going to be able to afford a lot of other cars. Um, so usually when I'm playing, I'll have a, my monster truck and a couple of buggies, because buggies are lighter and cheaper. Um, so usually it's like monster truck, a car, and two buggies. But uh, yeah, so you've got, there's lots of, lots of options, lots of different ways you can do it, but really no, five. pardon? Five. five, yeah, really no more than five. I mean, I mean, say you don't need any, more, need any more than five, but you're gonna want more than five, to be completely honest. And because the cars are like a dollar a piece, eh. <laughs> some of the, um, if you're looking for very specific vehicles, like um, like I did when I was working on some of these, uh, there are websites out there for Hot Wheels and Matchbox car collecting. Um, a great one that I like is uh, loosecars.com. And you can end up spe spending like all the way up to like $20 for a car, oh, which is no. crazy. So people look at that and go, that's ridiculous for a Matchbox car. And it's like, well, yes, but I just went and spent $100 on a model from Games Workshop. So it's all relative. <laughs> I have, um, I'm building a, uh, a 164th scale version of uh, the Giga Horse, which is the car that Immortan Joe drives in Fury Road, which is actually like it's two cars stacked on top of each other. Like one car stacked on top of another. Uh, <laughs> they're both Cadillacs. And that particular Cadillac is, you can find it as a Matchbox car, but it's very tough to find. So I think those cost me about seven or eight dollars each. That's not bad. Uh, no, no, it's not bad at all. And then I had a, uh, I was like, oh, I found some big wheels. This particular vehicle has huge wheels at the back. Um, it's got big wheels at the front, but huge wheels at the back. And I found some, some wheels that were going to work, but they weren't exactly right. And then somebody pointed out to me that um, there are some tractor models, tractor, oh, uh, tractor toys that you really can buy. Clever, yeah. And when I looked at it, it was like, those are exactly the same. They're, they are just what they used on the, they used tractor wheels on the back of this vehicle in, uh, in the movie. But anyway, suffice to say that I'm at the point where I've, I've spent about $45 so far on this car. <laughs> so what's that you did at White Ball Tires for Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Pardon? Did you prime these? Uh, yeah, so these ones, uh, the ones that we're working on, I primed this one black, 
and uh, for the one that Gretchen's working on, it's I primed, primed it black first and then gave it a, like a zenithal prime of white. Because I knew that Gretchen wouldn't be content with just working with like dark colors. She was going to want a, a nice sort of bright, bright base to work from. You need at least, in your gaming group of, of cars, you need at least one brightly colored distraction car. Sure. Yep. It has to be fast enough to get away and bright enough to confuse your enemies. Yep. So they go, what, what was that? Oh, <laughs> after it. And then while they're all chasing after that car. <laughs> Mike says 40 minutes of pie. <laughs> 40 minutes of pie. Let's do that. So some more minis from the Painting Happy Little Minis Facebook group. What do we have? Let's see. Oh, cool. Andrew Avalos, The Witcher board game managers. These are looking very nice. That's cool. I'm loving that, uh, that sort of magical fire, I think, in the hand. Have you seen all the, uh, the stuff for the movie? I have not. No. They got some stills up. If you yeah. like that, if you like The Witcher, that's a. Yeah, I suspect I'll. I, I, I haven't really. I don't so know. No, I, no, I don't. I don't know. Okay. I don't know much about it at all. That's okay. It's a video game, is that right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, that's the extent. Uh, but, yeah, I think the the um, the stills that I've seen and and that sort of thing look do look pretty cool. But uh, those models look great, Andrew. Very nice. Oh, Robert's posted up a zombie survivor. Looking great. Robert's been doing a lot of uh, continuing his uh, post-apocalyptic collection. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Craig says, distraction car is a smart car. It's a smart car. It has to be smart, otherwise how would it get away? <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom. Uh, I'm, on this one, Robert, I'm loving the, uh, the wear and tear on the jeans down the front. Looking good. Very nice. Oh, Steve has painted up a, a 3D printed Orc Barbarian hero. That looks great. I wonder, Steve, did you uh, 3D print that yourself or was that from Hero Forge? No. Printed himself? I'm not sure. But, uh, I had it in there, but I didn't. Okay. Yep. Looks great. That the uh, the long blonde blowing, like flowing hair, yeah. flowing yeah. hair blowing in the wind. I love it. Kind of gives me a very, very much a Fabio feel. A Fabio walk. True warrior knows how to kill his enemies and condition his hair. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas Fletcher, hey Nick, how's it going? Um, Kirai, I think uh, this is from Malifaux. Oh. And I bet those scissors come in four pieces. But uh, no, looking looking fantastic there, Nick. I love the um, that fade on the scissors. It's looking uh, looking very cool. That sort of jade green. It's working great against the the reddish orange. Looking nice. Oh, Stacy has uh, finished off this piece from uh, Judgment. So I think we showed this last week as a work in progress. Um, but yeah, looking great. So this uh, is actually it looks like a necromancer. Uh, Raising these skeletons Crazy. around, but uh, looking very cool. I'm loving the uh, the metal work. Very nice Good work, Stacy. That is so wonderfully colorful. Oh my goodness! A war shrine dedicated to chaos. Ah, uh, to Slanesh, Sorry, chaos war shrine. But uh, yeah, looking fantastic. Right? I think yeah, those um, the big sort of yellow flares at the front are from the um, Greater Demon of Slanesh. But uh, yeah, this is looking crazy. I'm loving the. Pardon? Is it a mirror at the top? Um, I I'm not sure. I don't want to look into it if it is. I'm not sure it's some sort of uh, chaos thing that will suck my soul. Um, but yeah, looking fantastic. Nice work, Dwight. Oh, Chris is working on a uh, 54 centimeter or a 54 millimeter. 54. Millimeter. I think so. I think it might be 54 millimeter. But. Uh, Mission a, a night, so this is looking fantastic. I'm wondering which way Chris is going to go with this. Whether it's going to be a uh, a night Templar or a night Hospitalia. <laughs> so many choices. So many choices. All the nights. But yeah, coming along nicely, Chris. 
Oh, Andrew Joyce. Ooh. My Vanus all painted up. That is cool. Is that from, um, i trying to remember, is that from WizKids? I, I think the carriage on the, on the right-hand side, back on the right-hand side, definitely is. We painted that, ooh, 18 months ago, I think. Yeah. That's a great, uh, great looking mini, but yeah, I'm loving that. It's uh, very bright and colorful. Good work, Andrew. Oh, Chris has been working on the Hulk. Man, that purple. <laughs> we were talk talking about purple That's being crazy. That's such a good purple, though. Yeah. It, it almost looks like that the shading, it's so, like, delightfully poppy and punchy. Yep. Yeah. It looks, uh, it looks great. Nice work, Chris. I love the uh, Coke bottle as well. There's a little Coke bottle <laughs> on there. That's cool. Uh, Brian's that last unit of cultists. Wow, these are looking very cool. Crazy. That's a lot of models you got there, Brian. Who's standing at the back? Did we see that? Did we see the one standing at the back uh, last week or the week before? No, a while ago. Okay. Yeah, looking nice. I think um, I'm not sure about the the cultists, but on the uh, on the right, I think there's a, a whole bunch of Malifaux models in there, so. Might be a Malifaux collection. But yeah, looking good, Brian. Very nice. Oh, excellent. Peter's back to um, working on his saturated colors, which Ooh. is great. So this is one we talked about three or four weeks ago, I think, mm -hmm. uh, that um, something that uh, the Josh Mini Painting Studio was working on is that idea of using the, like, the focal point having the saturated colors, and then as you move away from the focal point, so down, down the body there, you move into desaturated colors. So working with that nice. It's a good trick to move the eye around. Yep, yep, definitely great. Working, getting a, a very cool, a very nice contrast. Can't say cool because you think I'm talking about cool or warm, but uh, looking good, Peter. Very nice. Dracos tabletop painting. A little summoning circle. <laughs> that summoning circle is tiny. What are you going to summon with that? Ants. Ants. Summoning circle for ants. It's colorful. It is very colorful, isn't it? It's a happy summoning circle. It is. I hope so. <laughs> or it's a good tricksy one. Like you see it, you have your adventurers, like they have to pick out a summoning circle, and they're like, this one looks happy. Let's use this one. It's like, no, you should have used the death skulls. We, That's the peaceful one. We can summon Santa, not <laughs> Satan. <laughs> this one has. That's how they trick you. Nah. Yeah. Slip of the tongue. This is all, it has eight skulls around it as the candles, so. Oh, I'm still a little bit worried by it. But no, looking, good, looking very cool. Good job. Oh, Mario's been painting a troll. New member, uh, Mariano, sorry. Uh, very cool troll. Love its face. Yeah. <laughs> it's got that sort of grim sort of anguish. It's like a basset hound face. It does, it does have a basset hound kind of feel. That, that face. But uh, no, looking very nice. I love that uh, the, that sort of uh, the warm gray colors that you've got going on there. And those big fantasy uh, toadstools are oh, amazing. Yeah. Very nice. Good work. And Dave has been painting the Shambling Mound from WizKids. Oh. Yeah, that's, I don't want to see that coming down a corridor. That not, strikes me as something that's going to be like a nice woodsy thing that you, you just hear a, a simple rustle and you look up and it's... Yeah, <laughs> you're, all of a sudden you're being devoured. But no, that's looking great. Very nice. I love the variety of, uh, the, variety of the greens in there. Nice work, Dave. Good one. <laughs> cool. Okay. What time have we got? We've got about 10, minute, 10 more minutes of painting, and then pie. Ah, I, I will hustle then. I'm trying to make mine look a little banged up, but still like roughly new. Like it's the beginning of the apocalypse. Right. Yeah. And you're still hopeful. Or maybe they're just that good. You don't know. You don't know. This is true. Another reason that I think that uh, the, all the rusty vehicles in Mad Max Fury Road are cultivated rust mm -hmm. is that they obviously know how to maintain their cars and have shiny 
chrome sections. So I think it's okay for me to be putting some really bright silver here on the exhausts. Craig says, it's not my fault it's so small. It can summon an imp date. <laughs> cool. Well, I figure that whatever you're summoning into that, you're going to be able to handle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to go with like the, the extra large summoning circle. That sounds dangerous. I don't want to supersize that, no. <laughs> what are you summoning, Ronald McDonald? <laughs> Shh. <laughs> the Hamburglar. Yeah. Um, where is it? I'll find it. Okay, I'll come back to that. Okay, in this black, I'm going to mix a little bit of uh, bone, get some dark gray, do some highlighting on the, yeah, the leather jackets cool. of the, the crew, just quickly. And then, what do you got I'm going gonna on? Add some, I said I'm going to go super quick and just make everything that's supposed to be metal, metal. Okay. And then I'm going to go back and do some fun little details, and then I'm going to dirty it up. Right. <laughs> Excellent. Cool. See if I need a wash or something so I can do it within the allotted time frame for Pi. Yes, yes. Something I didn't bring, and I apologize for that, is I didn't bring uh, some uh, foam, some sponge foam, that um, is really good for doing chipping ah, along the edges. Ah, yeah. Um, sorry about that. Next time. This made it look a little scratched up here and there and everywhere. Yeah. I'm gonna do some Brownish hair there for the crewman. I like how our concentrated silence started early within the threat of Pi. Yes, yeah, so we knew Pi was coming, yeah. So. <laughs> there we go. So you can start to see those, the crew members in there. Which is neat. Nope. Ronald McDonald as a demon of Slanesh. Well, the Slanesh is the god of excess. So I think, uh, yeah, super, super sized McDonald's is perfect for that. Okay. Oops, sorry. Oh, you're good. Yes. There we go. Oh. Let me find a dark gray. There we go. I'm just looking for. Telling you, glue the wheels. Like, you think you're gonna be putting one spinners? Oh, I think it's because the spinner is on, at an angle. Yeah. Let's try that. It's obviously not spinning fast enough to throw them off it, but there we go. We might just need a re. And the cool thing with the uh, the mini is you could do um, like Austin Powers <laughs> mini and paint a Union Jack on top. That'd be fun. Okay, and for this one, I'm going to go with the uh, the black uh, kind of look, because most of my other the all, black? the all black look, yeah. So pretty much I'm done with that one. Ta da! No, just kidding. Of course, um, I'm going to. And some um, dark gray. A quick um, brush. And of course, if you have wheels that spin, it's tough to dry brush them because they keep spinning around. Um, oh, and I probably should do a, a quick window tutorial. That's what I'll do. So if you um, if you take 
the person who takes your cars apart and separates them, you can uh, spray them, like prime them and paint the, the chassis without having the, the windows in there if you want. And then just put the clear plastic back in. Or like in a lot of mine where I've just left it out completely. So like this one doesn't have any, um, any windows. I you can, can do hear that. the whipped cream. Fun. <laughs> I can, mm -hmm. Leona's in the back putting whipped cream on the pie. And I right. just... <laughs> you could hear it. You started salivating. <laughs> oh my goodness. So we've got. I feel like Leona's just going to come out with like pies and just straight to the face. Pie to the face? That'd be no. bad. She wouldn't do that. No. She doesn't want to clean that, so she won't. She wants to eat the pie, right? No. <laughs> Clown pie. <laughs> Okay, and where is my dark blue? Okay, so looking for it. I no, can't find my dark blue. Where is dark blue here? Uh, there's uh, contrast, contrast. But not. Not the dark, dark one. Okay, looking underneath here. Here's one of the cake news. Oh! Nope, it's still a bit too light. There we go. I knew if I rummage around long enough. Okay. Now the technique you're gonna use here is, um, is one of those ones where it doesn't look like this in real life, <laughs> but it's, it's the look is used a lot in, you know, things like animation or um, some artwork, but it, it, people think that it looks like this, or when they see it, they recognize it for what it is. It's an illusion. It's an illusion. Illusion? An illusion. illusion. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's kind of the same thing, like if, if you were to uh, draw a tree, and you color it brown, people will know that it's a tree. The shape will help, but the brown, people think the trees are brown. The tra trees are mostly gray. Yeah. So it's one of those things. So I'm just getting a dark blue, painting it in on the windows. Like that. There's, oh, almost. This is another, um, another good reason for using uh, armor plating to cover the windows. If you do that, you don't have to paint them. Yep. So I've got that blue. And normally if you're uh, highlighting something, you can start from the top down and work down. But what we'll do with this um, is actually going to move to a lighter, mix in some lighter blue and start from the bottom. Work it up. I won't go around and do all of them, I'll just do this side here. Because Leona is making more pie noises. I'm taking a picture. Oh, taking a picture? Fantastic. My daughters will appreciate that. That's what I figured. Thank you. Adding in some white. This is not a pointy enough paintbrush. Oh, I hate that. To make a uh, a little family. I'll be. Oh, you're doing stick figure family. Yeah. <laughs> cool. I'll be finished here in a sec with that with this one. So. Smoking a little. Yeah, whipped cream does that under the lights. Okay, so basically I've just done that, where uh, I put the the lighter lighter blue to the bottom of the window, and a little reflective dot up in the top corner. Uh, for folks who are used to painting uh, gems or lenses on 
weapons or helmets or that kind of thing, sci-fi helmets. Um, it's kind of the doing the same thing on, but on the windows. And then you can get some uh, gloss varnish and paint over that. So hopefully that helps people. Hopefully folks have enjoyed our being goofy with cars and that kind of stuff. I'll pop and move that out of the way. Pop that on. So as it comes around, you get to see that. <laughs> Gonna hide my blob. Oh, oh, you did them. <laughs> Just looking good. Stick figure family's looking great. Um, sure. Leona is going to cut the pie. Or should we, yeah, cut the pie. That's okay. I don't think you're going to be able to see it. I did take a picture. That's good. <laughs> yes, I think I mentioned it last week, but my, my daughters were super excited. Well, Emily, Pass my oldest daughter. The pointy, pointiest? The pointiest paintbrush. There we go. May I my, also bother you for some actual white that is oh, less sure. used for yep. dry brushing? Sure. <laughs> Telling you. <laughs> all right, all right. Round glue, two. Glue the wheels. Of the tiniest family. There we go. The tiniest stick figure family. Yeah. Cool. But yes, as I was saying, my uh, eldest daughter Emily was super excited about the idea of pie decorating. So uh, she made some pies on uh, Tuesday night, I think. And so we brought uh, one of them in today um, over the next week. We hope to see a lot of cool pie photos in the group. Decorated pies for those of us in the US who will be celebrating Thanksgiving. Next week. Next week. So important to note, uh, we will not be here next Thursday. Uh, so no stream next Thursday. The following week, uh, Gretchen and the team are gonna be at uh, PAX Unplugged. We'll be, yep, and we'll be uh, having a painting episode at PAX Unplugged. Yep, painting episode at PAX Unplugged. So that's going to be Friday. Is it going to be the yep. same same time, two to four? Yes. Okay, keep, keep an eye out in the group. Keep an eye out on the Game Trade Media Facebook page as well to for that confirmation. But it uh, should be Friday, December 6th, I think. Is that right? Yes. I'm giving you small pieces. Oh, small pieces. Fantastic. Because I... All right. Thank you, Leona. I think this is the best I can get with this family. I, okay. <laughs> let, me, let me show everybody this. <laughs> For you, Craig, there is there's now a family. A stick figure family. A stick figure family. Oh. Take my pie. You check it out. Oh. <laughs> How cool is that? It's there. Yep. <laughs> it's there. It's fantastic. It's so cute. Yep. Yay. Excellent. Now we're going to do. Can you put a little baby on board on the other one? Right. On the other side. Cool. <laughs> I thought you were actually going to um, paint on a, a um, like a T Rex chasing them down. Oh yeah, I could do that too. You can totally do that. Yep. <laughs> that, was a, that would actually be a little bit more doable because it's bigger. Awesome. Pie. <laughs> okay. All right. So a big thank you to my um, to my daughter Emily. It's delicious pie. It is very good pie. Oh yeah. It is the best pie I've had. I don't think I've had pumpkin pie in like two years. Okay. Um, reminder for everyone, real quick, if you haven't done hashtag refueled, do, do hashtag refueled. Hashtag refueled. You could win a copy of. Oh! You threw it angrily. Now you have to pick it back up. Gaslands refueled. Yes, <laughs> I did throw it angrily. I didn't. It wasn't angrily. I just <laughs> dropped it on the floor. <laughs> Um, but we'll be announcing the winners um, on our Facebook page. So if you aren't part of the Happy Little Minis Facebook page, please join. Yep. Hello, yep. join us. There'll be one winner. There'll be one winner. One winner. <laughs> and one copy of Gaslands Refueled will be shipped from Osprey Games to the lucky winner. Haha. -ha. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's all. That's all yep. for today. Uh, I'm going to so have much. another bite of this. <laughs> You're going to have another bite of pie. But I'm going to say um, thank you, everybody, for joining us on what's well, kind of an unorthodox um, episode. But it was a fun one. It was a lot. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. 
a lot of fun. Good really techniques. Cool. Yep, fun things to learn. Uh, stippling rust, mm -hmm. uh, painting windows, all that sort of stuff. All right. Definitely cool. Well, I'm Gretchen. I'm Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching Painting Happy Little Minis. We'll see you at your friendly local game store. Thanks for watching Painting Happy Little Minis. If you liked it, leave a like and a comment below and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new content.